that was Ark Witch in action. And this is the casual, friendly, very easy build that I'm gonna be teaching you to do it yourself DIY today. If this is your cup of tea, please keep watching. Hello everyone, I am Jairo, I'm your host here. So today we are continuing our mini-series of introduction of new beginner, absolute beginner players to Path of Exile Ultimatum League. This is a so-called League Starter, except it's made with the actual, literal beginners in mind. The first video has shown you absolute, real beginner basics of Path of Exile. Hopefully you watched that video by now and you understand what spells are, what support gems are, what passive, passive tree is like, and just general direction. This is only a second video in the series, so I will tell you quite a bit about the passive tree and the core of this build of the, of the Arc Witch, and I'll explain to you how Arc works. The main ability is Arc. It's a lightning spell, and it's a chaining lightning spell. An Arc of Lightning stretches from the caster to targeted enemy and chains onto other nearby enemies. So basically it does this, except it does it really, really fast, okay, really, really fast. And you saw in the showcase and in the periodically shown kind of overlay of the footage in the background how awesome it is. And it's not even a fully built witch yet. It's not even a fully built witch. So as I explained to you how support gems work and how it's important to get items with a lot of linked sockets. Arc needs to be supported by certain gems and these are not the best gems. These are not the best gems absolutely. But let's focus on the essentials. Essential is Arc itself, you start using it, the gem starts leveling up. Currently my level is 13 of the gem. Spell Echo Support unfortunately is not a gem that appears straight away in your arsenal. You need to get all the way to Act 4 if I'm not mistaken. And after doing a quest there, this gem is going to be awarded to you as a quest reward there. It basically makes the, spe makes the spells repeat themselves. It hits an additional time. Uh, the supported skill deals 10% less damage, but it hits twice. So it's fantastic. And it also hits faster. You saw in the showcase of how awesome it actually looks once it starts working properly. It is fantastic. So spell lack of support. Also here is the faster casting support. We want to be a machine gun. We want to be a lightning machine gun. That's how you want to be as an Arc Witch. At least that's how I'm playing it. Efficacy support is one of those kind of already becoming slightly more optional supports, but pretty useful. We are dealing more spell damage, you know, in this particular case. I'm simply bluntly increasing the amount of damage being done. And Arcane Surge support is the, is the very first one that you got in the game, is the very first support that you may remember. As far as Arc, Spell Echo and Spell Casting Speed are concerned, these are your staple abilities, that's the main thing you need you obviously will need to invest into your survivability as well. And you will also need to run around with golems. Golems are spells as well, but they're summoning spells. You start from the very beginning here, you go left, you increase your spell damage, you proceed to this path to the Arcanist Dominion. This is a flat out increase to our spell damage, cast speed and intelligence. Spell damage and cast speed are your first primary objectives at that point. Now. This wave off increases your maximum life and maximum mana, which both are generally good effects. Increase life and mana, increase energy shield, mana, intelligence. Intelligence boosts your amount of mana and spell damage. This is fantastic too. Again, same thing, increasing mana, regeneration of mana, increasing mana recovery from fasks. This is, the, this is the, also the branch here that I've taken. Over here, I'm starting to boost my elemental damage increased lightning damage especially because I will need a lot of lightning damage now this node this node you can you can take it after you got arc you do not need to branch off to here to take this straight away anything that has anything to do with lightning you're going to take after you got arc very simple after level 12 before level 12 you're proceeding with general spell damage and spell cast speed and what are you going to be leveling with up to level 12? You are going to be leveling with Frozen Pulse. Frozen Pulse is a fantastic ability. Fantastic ability. I would say Arc is obviously better for mid-game towards end-game because it just 
kills groups of enemies and chains to lots of enemies much 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 more efficiently and much 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 better in my opinion. It has a shock value and all that kind of stuff. But for an early game, for like the second gem that you ever got, Frozen Pulse by far, in my opinion, outperforms everything else even though some people I know go straight away lightning route and they pick Spark. Spark is an alternative to that, but I personally do not level with Spark. I think that um, I think that uh, Frozen Pulse performed fantastically well for me. So once you switch to lightning damage from frost damage, you start taking nodes like this one. And always read, always read the nodes before you do it. Increase of intelligence is a is a no-brainer because and this is a path to the right node clusters, so that's what we're taking. Strength is just on the way, we kind of have to take it. There are two massive nodes of importance over here. Mind over matter is something that basically, well, it does what it says. It allows you to stagger or reduce the, the incoming damage by 30% at the expense of the mana. That's why we're boosting mana everywhere. I hope now it starts making sense. The faster your mana regenerates and the more mana you have, the more you can sacrifice that like that. And suddenly, basically, receiving 30% less damage is almost like having a massive shield on or something. Like It's a massive mitigation of damage. Now, this cluster is very interesting, branching off onto here. Elemental Overload. It does a massive increase to your elemental damage. Massive. If you've dealt a critical hit in the past 8 seconds. Okay, so here is the thing. This is not a critical hit build, build. We are not boosting critical hit in that case, in, in this case. However, it's a casting speed based build. So because you're hitting so many targets with that lightning and because you're shooting so fast, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, th there will be critical hits. And especially towards the end game when you shoot faster, 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 faster and it branches, arc, arc branches and hits more targets, you will crit somewhere. So you will be able to maintain this buff of 40% extra elemental damage quite often, if not always, if not all the time. That is the idea of it. Now, once again, as I mentioned, we are going up. We are not... I'm, I'm recommending that you fill out this area first. Once you get arc, you do this. You take lightning walker. You take these two nodes. This one, if you're struggling with survivability, mind over matter. Once you start feeling that you are a bit squishy, yeah, especially if you're doing ultimatum challenges, but we'll speak with them about them separately, then I absolutely recommend Elemental Overload and I recommend anything that has to do with increased cast speed and increased energy shield and mana recharge rate for obvious reasons that I've just explained to you. But this is not it. I also mentioned to you earlier that mana at some point also converts into spell damage, right? Well, we are moving upward here using this path around this branch you can take if you want to beef yourself up a little bit i think that this can wait it's not your first primary idea so you wouldn't be filling it out around 40 you would be filling it out towards 50 that's what i would say towards level 50. this is where i'm once again i'm in, in, contributing to my intelligence i'm contributing to mana mana regeneration rate and over here is a massive kind of let's call it a cluster that is basically the heart of thunder and the, you know the everything to do with the lightning damage we are after these both cluster nodes take a look at how massive massive this contribution is 25 percent increased lightning damage damage penetrates resistances and lightning damage leached as energy shield as well as these are increasing by 15%. They look small, but they are massive contributions to your to your spell damage. Massive. This side, slightly, slightly smaller contribution to lightning damage, but a chance to shock. And in the end, we do more lightning damage. We do duration, duration to lightning ailments. It's fantastic. Now, this class is actually very important as well. It doesn't look very important, but it is. This is the golem commander. This is something that allows you to have extra golem. It in increases the damage, your damage when you have a golem running around 20%. That's that's massive. That's quite a bit. So you want this. You want this. Once you filled out this top part, that's when you start branching out here towards this cluster over here. Down here, you unlock the basic jewel socket, and it's good if you have a good one. Like I say, that this is probably a bearable one for a casual. I regenerate mana per second, and I have increased elemental damage. Can't go wrong with that. 
And finally, we take this cluster, this cluster. Over here, take a look, Prodigal Perfection. Prodigal Perfection is definitely a node of note. Uh, so, increased spell damage, increased maximum mana, and 2% increased spell damage per 100% of maximum mana, up to 40% increased spell damage. That is a massive contributor to our spell damage, I hope I don't need to say any more. Now, once you're done with this world, once you're done here, we start branching off towards left, and I have not yet reached all the important nodes, but I'm intending to, so I'm going left down here. At this stage, when I am level 54, I start, experience, I start feeling a bit squishy, because I finished the parts of the campaign, after which, in a, at a certain point, you lose quite a lot of resistances. You lose quite a lot of resistance, so you need to build them back up in order to continue being competitive and continue not dying, basically, instantly when something hits you. So I am going to, con to go for increased chaos resistance and increased maximum life, and I am going to continue going down downward over here in case you want to know what my intent is. And I'm going to increase my maximum mana more to protect myself more and to increase spell damage. And I'm going to take this, uh, this node as well, where I'm going to again contribute to um, to my arcane search procs and maximum mana. And I probably will wrap up over here, my friends, because we've been talking for quite some time and there's only so much that you of talking at you that you can handle per one video. This was just part two. Once again, as a reminder, if you have not watched absolute beginner friendly first steps, literally first steps into Path of Exile in Ultimatum League, please watch that video, it's linked above. And I hope you enjoyed this slightly more, slightly deeper steps into this League Starter data build of Arc Witch in Path of Exile Ultimatum. Please let me know in the comments down below if this is still helpful for you, if you like these showcases, and I will definitely prepare more videos for you, specifically talking to you about how to beat Ultimatum, Ultimatum encounters with the higher chance of success. I'm not going to guarantee that you will win every time. Thanks very much for all of your support and all of your comments, especially people who have not commented ever and who are new subscribers to this channel. Your support means a lot, just in terms of my morale. I love playing these games, but I also love talking to you. It's like a hobby of mine and I really appreciate when people say to me, you know what, Jairo, this actually was helpful. I like feeling that I'm actually helping someone with this and I like having this little friendly club. If you have not yet subscribed but you feel like you belong, Please don't second guess yourself, like the video right now and hit the subscribe button and I'll be speaking with you in a few days time. See you soon!